Hey y'all, hey, it's Simone Shanae from Around The Way, providing you with a one-stop shop for reviews, reveals, and reenactments. And today, we're going to be talking about episode four of, you guessed it, Run The World. This episode is entitled, I Love Harlem. And when I tell you, literally, this makes you want to hop a flight and go to New York and experience all this culture that is just exuberating off the off the screen. It's This episode is full of color, culture, and it's just, I really enjoyed it. This episode, um, well, the synopsis for this episode is that Whitney, Elisani, Renee, brunch, shop, drink, and dance in Harlem on a perfect uptown Saturday. So, and that's really what it's all about. I love the flow um, of the episode. It's very chronological order. Um, so I appreciate that. I know I made a comment about the last episode, how it's kind of like, a little all over the place but this episode is very flowy it's literally making you feel like it's just a saturday afternoon and we're just experiencing experiencing the day and like i said culture jumps right off the screen and it's awesome you see statues you see all these different street names of different um activists and all these things and it's just it just jumps right off the screen so let's just let's just dive right on in so uh it opens up with Renee looking for an apartment. And you're like, okay, she's looking for an apartment? That, you know, you remember from the other episodes, you know, she's getting supposedly getting divorced from her husband, Jason. So we're like, okay, she's looking at this apartment. And then, you know, she provides all this information or whatever to the, the person, realtor, whoever. And then later on in episode, literally the next shot, you see Jason and Renee talking and you realize, oh, she was looking for an apartment for Jason. So I, I was wondering, I was like, Renee don't seem like the one that she would leave the, leave the crib. So especially, you know, everything that's been going on. So I was like, oh, she said, I got something for you. you we, we, I'm looking for a place for you because you need to go. So they had their little tit for tat. Um be back and forth renee and jason does about him not wanting to leave this space um supposedly they're doing some type of uh consciously uncoupling um instead of divorcing which goes in more deeper later on the episode because when you first hear it in the beginning you're like what are y'all doing consciously uncoupling okay y'all being civil because that was my first thought process y'all just y'all just being civil until y'all get the divorce so anyway, she gets mad and kind of just storms out. Well, she doesn't get mad. She She's very passive and says she's going to go meditate. And so, but she's really going to call Ella. But Ella's busy. So, you know, the last episode, we left Ella with Anderson and everything like that. And well, you know what? This episode opens Ella and Anderson getting it in. They clearly had missed each other a little bit. And so they're getting it in. And I guess it's been a couple weeks since her birthday because later on, like, as far as the time conundrum, whatever it is, you see, like, okay, they mentioned later that it's been a few weeks since her birthday. So, anywho, so they getting it in. And when I say they get it in, they getting it in. So, we come to that. You can tell that Ella's a little bit in denial. She ain't ready to fall all the way back into the relationship because after they had their little playful, after they get in, and they talk about going to brunch. Uh, they walk off past this girl on the street, this young girl on the street. And she's like, y'all cute or whatever. And she's like, we not together. And it's like, really? You, denial. Like, you you want him. You over here can't wait to get back with him. So, anywho, then we're going to get introduced to a new character as Ella and Anderson go off to brunch on this Saturday afternoon. Oh, whatevs. Um, we meet Ivy. Which, you know, I be said cool. Did she meet up with him and his little homeboys? And um, I guess she considers him to be her, her work husband. And they they going about their, doing their thing. They're going to be brunching it out. And, you know, uh, Avi is gay with all his, you know, happy Pride Month uh, ally for sure. So, uh, you know, they just having this moment and they are having a conversation. And Avi brings up... Uh, the Ryans. He said his next thing is going to be uh, Mary, uh, what was it? Mary Shad kill the Ryans. And he's referring to Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Phillippe, 
and am I saying his last name Philippi yeah. and Ryan Gosling and so he purposely asked Anderson you know Mary Shad kill who you gonna do uh this is interesting because I and I want y'all to tell me in the comments below who y'all feel y'all Mary Shad kill between Ryan Gosling Ryan Reynolds and Ryan Philippi because I did not agree with what Anderson said and everybody at the table is like, yes, Ryan, Ryan needs to die. Ryan Gosling, Ryan Gosling is that my, uh, no. Cause for me, I feel like I'm a do with the Mary Shad kill situation. I think I'm, I'm gonna I'm kill Ryan Reynolds. You can have Ryan. I mean, no shade of Ryan Reynolds, but I'm gonna kill Ryan Reynolds. And then I'm going to probably marry Gosling and shag philippi or i might flip them either way reynolds is gone so i don't agree with the consensus saying that gosling got to go now nah, reynolds reynolds can go so anywho to let me know in the comments below who wish up mary shag kill ryan philippi gosling and reynolds back to the show anywho so they do that whole thing and anderson you know i like i like a man who is secure in himself and his sexuality to participate in things like this and not have to do the whole gay pause thing because it's just it it's not necessary <clears throat> if you're comfortable <clears throat> excuse me and who you are and you know what you like you can participate in these things and it shouldn't be that big a deal so i like the fact that they made sure anderson was able to just go along with the flow and you can tell he impressed Ella and moving on. So while they're at this brunch, uh, after he answered, Anderson answers the question, he kind of goes off and get him and Ella some drinks and Whitney and Dr. O, Ola, pop walk up. And they're like, oh, hey, you know, how you doing? You know, it's, it's nice to see where it's like, okay, y'all just out in the world. Everybody ain't always just there. It's like, oh, it just so happened we ran into each other. So... They have a quick conversation because Ola and uh, Whitney are about to go off to get some Nigerian garb for her for her wedding uh, change or outfit for the Nigerian wedding. And but they run into each other and have a quick conversation. And then they see Anderson come back and Whitney's like, hi, Anderson, just cheesing all extra hard and looking all hard at Ella like, OK, let me see what you've been doing since your birthday. So anywho. So then we kind of switch cam, but like I said, it's not even switch cam. It's like, it's a nice flow. So it's like, then we flow onto the next aspect of Whitney and Dr. O, Ola. So they walking through the little market or whatever, going into a nice little cultural area, Nigerian. And um, Ola's as, as cute as ever with her. Like, ugh, I just don't know, understand Whitney's problem. Anyway, I'm sorry. But yeah, so... They just, they as cute as ever. And Ola makes it even a little comment. It's like, cause she's like, oh, something, something about the wedding. And he's like, you know, I'm about to go get me some oxtails while you shopping with my sister. Cause, oh, we better get exposed to another character, Ola's sister. And she's like, oh, I can't eat that heavy close to the wedding. And he's like, girl, I hate to break it to you, but we've done the work. We're a sexy couple. And it's just, it's just cute. It's just cute. And I just, I need Whitney to get it together. But, I do appreciate this episode because we are going to dive deeper a little bit later episode and how Whitney feels. It gives it gives us a little substance to kind of, kind of feel sorry and looking deep into what Whitney's going through, but we'll get there. So, Ola goes off and get his oxtails and then Whitney, we see uh, Monifa, Monif, Mo Monife, I'm, you know what, we're going to say M, Dr. O, Dr. O, Sister M, Miss M. So, Sister M, Sister M, that's what we're going to do. Dr. O, Sister, Sister M. Uh, so, we run into him and run into her and Whitney starts shopping with her and looking at different fabrics in the little Nigerian area of Harlem. And while they're doing different things, getting fitted for different fabrics and stuff, Whitney gets caught up in her emotions because she, Sister M just keeps saying how, oh, yeah, I can't believe you deal with, with Dr. O this long, her brother, like you live with anybody outside the family longer than anybody else. And she's just getting all misty eyed because that guilt, is, it's not even misty, it's that sparkle of guilt. Guilty, guilty. It's just coming from her eyeballs throughout this whole episode, to be honest. And she's like, no, I'm the lucky one. You know, your brother is fantastic, as we all know, because you the one that's tripping, you know, I'm sorry, I've been getting in my feelings, but... So she just gets starts to get a little a little guilty eyed, like 
like I said, ching, ching, guilt, guilt, while they're talking about the wedding. Because her, his sister just keeps saying, oh, she's so perfect for him. And he's definitely marrying up and she just feels terrible. Anywho, so then the next scene is Whitney meets up with Renee. So it's like another cat moving on progression. It's like, okay, she did her thing with the Nigerian guard. So now she's going to hook up with her friend. And I really love this scene coming up with Whitney and Renee. Because it lets you under, like dive into where their relation how their friendship was formed and i like and this is where it completely differs on sex in the city because i feel like with sex in the city everything revolved around carrie it's like everybody met through carrie and he's like you didn't know anybody else's friendship or how they became friends at least to what i can remember while now with this scene and with renee and whitney you you get to dive into how they are all friends and so it's like mention well let's just let's just start from the beginning so it's Whitney and Renee meet up and we are getting introduced to the fact that they've known each other since sixth grade. And it's like her or Renee, Whitney and Ella have known each other since sixth grade because Renee, I, Whitney chooses this moment to tell Renee that she cheated on Ola. And Lily Renee just like, and like, yeah. And she's like, why aren't you? And Whitney's like, why aren't you reacting? She's like, girl, Ella Benden told me a couple of weeks ago. And that's how we know it's been a while since the birthday because a few weeks ago whatever it's been at least three four weeks i guess you say since the birthday so and she's like girl you know are we the what trinamic trio of trust and that's what renee says to whitney when it's like uh i can't stand our group name or our little group sixth grade name that we have so that's how we know they've known each other since sixth grade ella renee and whitney so then moving on for that, they have a nice heart to heart just about what she's going through because it's revealed that Ola is the only man before uh, community, community Chris, that Ola has been the only man Whitney has ever been with. First, last, my everything. Shout out to Barry White. But literally, and so that's why she, and it's not even that she questions her relationship with Ola or that that's the man she wants to be with she just feels like she hasn't experienced life she feels like it has all resolved revolved excuse me revolved around this relationship she has never been she mentioned she, she's never been ghosted she's never been uh had a one night stand and all this stuff and I'm like girl the grass is not greener it's not tell you right now you better keep this fine Nigerian and get married and drop this man's babies because it's not greener on the other side. I'm, I'm assuming you're 32 as well. Since y'all were in the sixth grade together, you 32 as well. I just had this, matter of fact, I just, you know what, we're gonna veer off for a second. I just had this full bone conversation. We went to brunch, three of my, it was three of us, three females and three guys, we all went to brunch. And we literally were talking about the hardships of dating. And we mentioned, I said, it's harder for a 30 something to date because men our age are going to be looking at the 20 somethings. And they asked me to elaborate. And I said, okay. And so I said, because of the fact, the three things y'all are going to be looking at is you're going to look at a 20 something thinking you can mold them. You're going, to, you're going to assume they have less mileage. And you're also going to uh, fertility, fertility wise. So that almost plays into the other episode, fertility wise. So, and they asked, well, what's wrong with that? Like those three things you said seem like legitimate reasons. That's the problem. Cause one, you don't know if that 25 something or that 20 something has less mileage. You don't know if you really can mold them. You don't know how they were raised. And three, technology is advancing where we can have children later. Hence the, episode, the last episode talking about freezing our eggs in the state of black women because of the fact of the matter is we, as we get older, we're we're getting women regardless are less desirable so it's like we're it, i've already figured out like if i don't get married probably by the time i'm 35 I, it's gonna be a, a wrap for me i feel because it's like y'all you, you the per the people the men we was talking to agree like i don't see anything wrong with that so anyway i say all that to say whitney girl let it go and say with your nigerian because it's it's not greener out here moving veering back so they just talking about all this and of course then Renee kind of fumbles back into her problems because she's like 
girl i get it like from your married friend that's about to get a divorce and then she kind of like rambles on on some things and then we discover that they're not really getting a divorce like a divorce divorce like the whole consciously uncoupling thing they're doing that almost like a generic separation because it still ain't even gonna be on paper they're doing this generic separation that they're calling a conscious consciously uncoupling and because they're not wanting to pay for pay for it to pay for the money to get a divorce the divorce are expensive no matter what if it's a little or a little or a lot that you separating they're expensive so that's what they're doing and i just want to backtrack like how many of us really really believe in this divorce like it just seems very i don't i feel like i need more information because i feel like it's just rushed like i get i don't know how long i've been having these problems i don't know how long renee and jason have been going through this how long it's been since he uh, quit his job and maybe I missed it maybe I have to go back and see maybe they already said how long it's been since he's quit his job to manage this band on the subway that he found but it's just like y'all not gonna go to counseling like maybe I missed something I have to go back and watch some things but it's like y'all it, it just seems really rushed that you're so quick to be from we're trying you know we're trying to figure this out you know this is me trying and then it's just like divorce or consciously uncoupling generic separation so i don't know i don't let me know in the comments along with the ryan's situation uh how do y'all feel about this whole divorce thing because i'm just like i don't i'm i'm not feeling it i feel like we're halfway through this is episode four and i just feel like something something's gonna have to get they either gonna get back together because or whatever but anywho moving on so after they had that little heart to heart and you and you really get to experience the friendship that Whitney and Renee have and how they know each other. Like I said, it's really refreshing to see this scene, just seeing something outside Ella and understanding that these friendships are closer and uh, a closer knit bond than just knowing Ella. So then they go to get their homegirl, Sandy. So after drinking this little beverage, grown beverage, it was drinking while having this deep conversation, Renee and uh, Whitney decided to go to Matthew's house where Sandy is, cause they go use the bathroom cause she, she was ready to buzz. And so while there, you know, they kind of show up a little tipsy or whatever. And they're like, Sandy come out and play. And she's like, what? So <laughs> are we, are we five? And I thought that was so cute because literally me and my friends do that all the time. Like we just do little corny stuff. Like, what are you doing? Like just whatever like that. Just, so it was just, it was cute to see that. And so they kind of go off and have a quick little moment of almost like a Sonny, Renee, Whitney fun day. And we still don't know, like now we know that Renee, Whitney and uh, Ella know each other since sixth grade. And so I'm really interested to see how Sonny fits in this. I don't know if they met in college because we learned that she's from Memphis. So, it's, it'll be really interesting to see how that comes to play to understand truly how all that friendship built. But I'm assuming it's college. I'm assuming. But anywho, they have this fun day. They kind of go off and just start frolicking, frolicking in Harlem. And <laughs> so they start they run into a man with barbecue. So they get a little free barbecue, whatever. Very reminiscent of cousin poetic justice at, po at the barbecue. <laughs> and then they kind of go swing and just have a, have a fun girls day and then they start talking about the jason situation where renee's like y'all i really need jason to get out of my house and i found this man in an apartment i've done everything i can do i need this man at my house so sonny's like girl text him just text him tell him like look i need you to go woo to woo bye anywho and so then that leads to this whole little song that is like uh get the f out jason get the f out and that cracked me up because i would make up a song at a drop of a dime for no reason so i was like yes feeling all these vibes so it was just it was a cute day and then they start uh dancing in the park more culture i told y'all this this episode is just full of great culture it's just it's, it was mm, amazing watch the episode Anywho, and so then Matthew and his daughter pop up, you know, get some from, I don't know what they was getting, ice cream, I don't know, but Sandy gets all excited like, hey, and they grab each other and they, and while they dancing at this little band or whatever in the park doing their thing, and of course they do this slow-mo, this slow motion kiss, and you know that means something, you, they only do slow-mo because they want you to know there's emphasis on this event that's happening. So they do this cute little slow-mo kiss. And at the moment, it's cute. It's real cute. It's like, oh, it almost seems like Sonny Matthew got the only healthy relationship out here in these streets right now. And 
but because it's slow-mo you know it's going to foreshadow something else which it does but before we hit that and then get, get, get a call from Ella to come on out to they, that main bar they go to. I forgot what it's called. Starts with a Y or something. But, you know, to come on out there, it's lit. It's real lit. So Ella called Renee, tell her that to come. And they all head on out to that bar and basically have some old fun times. Like, homegirl. I just love how Maxine Shaw just be popping up in these episodes. Like, I appreciate it just because it's the same creator and writer or whatever, living single. And I'm like, y'all know what y'all doing. Y'all know what y'all doing because every time I see Maxine Shaw in the show, this show, it gives me life. So, anywho. And Maxine Shaw, as I said, y'all know who Maxine Shaw is. If you don't, why y'all watching this show? It's too young. You too young for it, bro. Anywho. <laughs> Back to what I'm saying. So, they go off and start dancing and having a good time. I mean, Ella and Whitney have this little moment where she's like, are you okay? Do I need you to call your mom? And Whitney's just like let me live okay just let me process i'm I'm doing okay so they kind of dance or whatever and what if these if the way these shops or these places are connected is really real like in harlem i really need to go to harlem like i just need i just need to go one it's been a long covid year i need to go anyway but it's just dope it's like you went from this bar and just open this little door this little nook and cranny and boom here the club you know but anywho they go dancing and then they slowly start trickling away. Ella gets a little um a little text from Anderson basically to say, come get it. And then so she trinkles off. And then Sonny gets a text from Matthew saying, Come home now, it's an emergency. And so while everybody else pretty much dances the night away. So then switch cam to Sandy getting back home to Matthew and she's like what's going on like you know is is, is the kid okay the daughter okay and everything like that he's like they know all ominous like and she's like what are you talking about like they know they know about us and she's like are you sure we've been really careful and then she checks her emails and she's like oh oh my god they know or whatever like that somebody saw us at the park we knew what the, we knew what the slow-mo kiss meant we already knew somebody was gonna see you in the park it's like it was obvious to know that that was what's going to happen next. So yeah, so they done got caught when they was all up on each other's slow-mo kiss in the park. So now the college knows about their relationship. And if y'all would have just went to the board for in the last episode, we wouldn't be having these problems. Matthew, try to tell you, girl. But anywho, so after that, we see Ella show up at Anderson's house and they start to get it in again. As I said, she's in denial because she about to be back with Anderson. And then we have Whitney getting home. It's a cute little note from Ola saying, I left you some oxtails, girl. I knew you gonna be hungry, you know you want it. And just saying that I love all your meat, girl. <sighs> Ola, girl. So she's like, yes, cause she drunk and hungry and she starts eating it. And the gift, guilty, guilty. Sparkles start coming back out her eyes and she throws the whole oxtail plate, which is such a travesty. How you just gonna throw the oxtail plate but anywho and be, but she needs to, she don't need to tell him what happened uh, back to the conversation with renee and whitney she said should i tell him ola about what she did and i, I whitney was like hey i'm not Whitney. renee was like hell no you ain't gonna tell him that is selfish and it is it is so selfish to tell people that you cheated now mind you it, it, it's a two-way street and go either way Either you tell them before they find out because we don't know what community Chris is talking about no more because he, he slid, slithered back into his hole, but he can come back out any minute and, and reveal some things. So I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going to be the next steps for that. But I went right now. She's saying, no, don't be selfish and destroy that man who loves you and your, all your crazy ways because you feel guilty. You better to bury that down deep deep in you and live your life and in this situation that probably is the best bet it's probably the best bet the only reason why it wouldn't be the best bet is if community slithers himself up in this business and reveal the old i was up so anywho and so then we end the episode with renee showing back home coming back home to the house and she brought more food back i guess at one of their favorite her and jason's favorite spot saying hey i got some more of this food you know some 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 she's all giddy haha <laughs> jay you know calling his name crickets 
calling his name again, crickets. And then she realized, she finds this note. He watched this whole show that they said it was gonna watch together and all this stuff. And she let, he left the note basically saying, got your text, I'm gone. I guess she forgot that soon that she sent this text saying, I need Jason at my house. But then all of a sudden she sees a little glimmer of regret, regret. That's how you see on her face. And then she starts watching the show. So that's how it ends. Uh, this show's getting good. It's getting good. We're halfway through. We're on episode four. I believe it's only going to be eight episodes in this season from what I've read. Um, but yeah, it's, it's re you're really starting to connect with the characters as information unfolds about how they know each other. And I'm really excited to see where this goes. And oh yeah, the preview, the preview kind of mentions with the next episode is signing in front of the board or front of the university and they're asking her questions about how long her and Matthew have been together. So we're about to dive deeper in how her and Matthew got together and then they show scenes about Wit, Wit and Ola's wedding. So we're gonna dive deep. I guess we're gonna get introduced to her mom and her other friends. So I think that's gonna be interesting to see as well. But if you like this content, please like, share, subscribe. And as I said, let me know in the comments about what Ryan, you would share, kill, marry, and uh, let me know what you think about this Renee's divorce. And let me know what you think about if Whitney should tell Ola or not. Um, but until next time, uh, I'll see y'all around the way.